Hello and welcome to Long Beach Lens. I am your host, Derek J. Simpson, Executive Director of the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Today we will be speaking with a council member representing the 8th District of Long Beach, and he's a gentleman that I've come to know, uh, not only as a colleague in the community, but a great leader, and that's uh, Councilman Al Austin. How you doing, sir? Very well, Derek. Thanks for having me on. Hey, it's, it's my pleasure. And as I said, I've over the, the last couple of years specifically, we've uh, had a chance to work on different things in the community, and I just want to start out by saying I really respect your, your passion for the community and the leadership that you, you provide in helping us make the city a better place to live. And when I say that, I want to ask you the question, because I know this is your first four-year term in office. Right. When you started out as just a, a community member, from that transition to being a council member, what did you learn about your district in that process? Well, I learned uh, a lot of the intricate details of the district. I think um, the thing that comes to mind first and foremost is the, the great need for us to uh, repair infrastructure. I mean, um, as a candidate um, and as a council member, I'm, I now have, a, I would say, a third eye where I'm looking at the details, right? right, right. I'm looking at the cracks in the sidewalks and in the mm -hmm. streets, and mm -hmm. I'm looking at curbs that need to be repaired and mm -hmm. um, trees that need to be trimmed. And so I've uh, developed an, an eye for, for detail mm -hmm. because uh, I like to anticipate, right. you know, what, what's next. Uh, and I think uh, that has uh, served us pretty well so far. Uh, mm -hmm. My staff is, uh, is, has worked very hard, and, and uh, so do I, to, uh, to identify uh, things like graffiti and, mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know about our district prior to uh, becoming a council member, I want to say uh, are a couple of the great resources that we actually have in the district, like um, our rancho. Uh, mm -hmm. I had lived in the community for over a decade and mm -hmm. had never been to the rancho, Rancho Los Cerritos, and mm -hmm. experienced the... Uh, the, the history and understood the, the, the significance right. that that has uh, on the history of, of our, our great city um, mm -hmm. and things like the growing experience, a lot, seven acre urban farm at uh, the Carmelitos, mm -hmm. these tucked away kind of hidden gems mm -hmm. uh, of the district that uh, mm -hmm. I like to now highlight and, and um, <clears throat> profile mm -hmm. for, for those who, who, uh, who may not know about them today. Right, and, and you mentioned Carmelitos, I mean, people might tend to think in the 8th District that we're thinking the affluence of, you know, Bixby Knowles and the area around Los Cerritos, but yeah. you have a, a diverse spectrum socioeconomically in your district as well, wouldn't you say? The, the 8th District is a is small uh, microcosm, mm -hmm. uh, is a microcosm of the city of Long Beach. Mm -hmm. We actually have um, a great affluence. Mm -hmm. We have um, bustling business districts. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, low-income housing. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, working class families. Mm -hmm. uh, we have it all. And so when it comes to policy making, um, I, I really, really am, uh, I think, very fortunate to, to, to be able to, to draw upon all of this diversity uh, mm -hmm. of, of uh, the great district to, to, to come up with, uh, I believe, uh, good decisions. So how do uh, the constituents in your district typically approach you? Is it through your field office? Do you have them? like lined up down to City Hall to try to get on your, your calendar. In a typical week for you, how does that insight from the community come to you? I, I don't put uh, communication with my constituents in a square peg. Uh, it comes in every form right. imaginable. Um, they are hitting me we on the gas social station media, media. Uh, <laughs> Twitter, Twitter uh, right, right. the coffee shop. Yeah. Uh, I make myself accessible at first Fridays through our right. council on the corner. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We are um, in our, with the, have great partnerships with our faith-based organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, any, uh, and, and above, obviously community watch programs, mm -hmm. which have been mm -hmm. really, I think, flourished over the last four years. Mm -hmm. Neighborhood associations, there are neighborhoods that are designated and, and organized and, and mm -hmm. uh, where we have people involved and engaged today that who weren't involved uh, four mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, just through a, a multitude of, of, of strategies to, to uh, enhance civic participation um, and communication, two-way communication with my constituents, mm -hmm. we able, we've been able to uh, be very successful in doing that. When you think of that spectrum, are there things, uh, accomplishments that, that really stand out in your mind that you're really proud of in the district? You know, I'm a proud of a lot of what we've been able to accomplish over the last four years. It's, it has been a, 
a, a whirlwind. Um, I haven't had a vacation, I can tell you, in four <laughs> years. Um, but, you know, I've had a great time uh, right. doing it. But, you know, um, we have dozens of new businesses um, that are now calling the 8th District home. Um, mm -hmm. it, it is a, a retail center in our, in our mm -hmm. city now. Mm -hmm. um, we um, have uh, flourishing neighborhoods. Um, our neighborhoods were always great. I think a lot of them are better. Mm -hmm. We've been able to pave, you know, miles and miles of uh, new streets and mm -hmm. sidewalks and mm -hmm. um, fix um, and, and improve our, the quality of our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, but most importantly, I think uh, the Be Safe Summer Program right. is uh, one that I'm very proud of uh, mm -hmm. because I championed that from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. It started off with an effort to get uh, summer programs in the north part of the city that was mm -hmm. ignored mm -hmm. prior to uh, um, Steve Neal and I um, right. championing that issue. <laughs> right. um, and now it's a citywide program. It's yeah. citywide, our Be Safe Summer programs where yeah. thousands of families and, and youth are benefiting from, from, from that. And, and uh, so that, that's one that, I, that comes to mind, the, Be the, um, the Peace League that I have mm -hmm. going on. That's something that I've been very committed to. We stack established that and we're able to uh, uh, we complete three seasons and, and impact the lives of you know um, mm -hmm. several dozen young young men and women 18 to 25 mm -hmm. a forgotten demographic when right. we talk about recreational programs right, right. but uh, we're able to change the lives of some a number of young people in that regard and, mm -hmm. and provide some scholarship opportunities when some of these guys are now playing basketball in, in Division One college or, or various yeah. colleges across the country. That's kind of exciting. Um, yeah. That was exciting, and that was a great partnership with the Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. um, the the programs that we've been doing, able to do, we've been able to um, plant hundreds of trees throughout mm -hmm. the district uh, through mm -hmm. uh, the the pork grant, um, and and that has been something that has really really engaged our neighborhood leaders mm -hmm. and and gotten our, our our communities involved and. Many of our youth organizations involved in volunteer programs. Um, we were able to start the Uptown Business District. Right. Um, we have a great business district with the BKBIA, which I think right. serves as a model for business mm -hmm. districts throughout the, the city. Uh, I've been able to give them great resources mm -hmm. um, and improve the business district through um, the um, um, investment of one-time uh, funds from uh, um, our, our, our council district office, mm -hmm. um, lighting on Atlantic, and, and uh, and other enhancements that, that have made our business district uh, even more appealing. Um, we still have some work to do with our uptown business district, but I'm very, very uh, confident that, you know, with the new developments that we have um, mm -hmm. on the horizon there, that Atlantic is going to be the place to be, particularly north of yeah. Delamo. And uh, you, you have also, I think, fortunate to have people like Blair and others in the community that have taken ownership right. wherever they stand in the community. To, to really, as you say, to have a sense of pride to make things happen. Well, I think we are in a special time in, in, in Long Beach, period. Um, and in Uptown, we have uh, a great chemistry um, mm -hmm. going on with a lot of motivated individuals who are, are committed and passionate about mm -hmm. changing the community. Um, our, our Blair Cone comes to mind as, as one of the, the leaders in our, our city who's doing a phenomenal yeah. job in yeah. terms of just servicing the business district. Mm -hmm. It makes it a lot, like, he's taken a lot, a lot, a lot of pressure off of, of right. me and allowed me to help um, focus on the l larger retail developments like right. the, the Knowles Center where we had Ralph's leave a few mm -hmm. years ago. Now mm -hmm. we have Trader Joe's moving in there and bringing in the Crunch Gym and uh, Pet Food Express and a number of other small retailers. Now, to be clear, that's on that's on Long Beach, Beach Boulevard. Yeah, okay. And then on Atlantic Avenue, okay. the the Gasca property, which was, you know, um, uh, it needed some attention. Um, right. But that that property, we should be breaking, cutting the ribbon on that um, mm -hmm. in the next few weeks. Um, mm -hmm. The the east side of that facility is is. Uh, it's all brand new, um, mm -hmm. where we expect to bring new retail development in, as, as well as an, um, other retail development. So mm -hmm. it is, it's a, allowed me to focus on, on mm -hmm. making things, areas like that successful in the district, um, while also so giving the business improvement districts the resources and the support they need to, mm -hmm. to continue to be, to be successful That's as well. That's a, a great deal to be uh, proud of. I, as you were talking about that, I didn't realize some of those things were happening. I know right before um, the Christmas uh, season and uh, the holiday season, I happened to meet someone uh, for dinner over on Atlantic, and it was really nice to get back over there again, 
and 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 have that experience of, of options of restaurants to mm -hmm. go to and and just a really nice uh, holiday vibe so i commend you and your team in that community uh, for doing what you do uh, now that we've moved up here we're in the ninth district here in this particular location but it allows us even more opportunities to go over to the the eighth district as well well you're just across the bridge from our our, our virginia village uh, area which right. i've been very instrumental in, in helping right. to to revitalize as well, bringing new yeah. businesses there. Um, yeah. We have the North Village on Atlantic, which right. is part of the Uptown Business District. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we go all the way over to Paramount Boulevard. And mm -hmm. um, one thing that, that I, I, uh, I campaigned on four years ago was I wanted to make sure that um, my district was consistent in terms mm -hmm. of its appearance and how we um, allocate resources um, mm -hmm. across the district and I'm very proud of the fact that if you go to any um, b any corridor in, in the 8th district mm -hmm. there the medians are all um, landscaped mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and it, it looks consistent it looks um, there's no area of the district that has not been touched um, and I think that has really really brought a sense of pride um, from for a lot of our neighborhoods uh, across the district mm -hmm. and I know we, we're going to go to a break shortly but uh, succinctly, can you talk about Beach Streets, I think it was, because oh, that yeah. was a, a big event, and we had uh, some of your team in here on one. Tasha Hunter was here oh, yes. talking about that, but that was pretty exciting, huh? Beach Streets was a smashing success. Yeah. Um, I, I like to say that that has been, many, many residents have come to me and, and tell me um, that, that that was the most um, amazing event that they have ever been a part of in the city of Long Beach in terms of you know c closing down three and a half square miles of Atlantic yeah. and and really really being able to experience uptown in an intimate way yeah. on their bicycles on yeah. foot um, and being able to just be part of a community we, we brought in thousands and thousands of residents not only throughout the city of Long Beach but across the region mm -hmm. and I think it really really benefited um, our, mm -hmm. our communities, uh, particularly our businesses and our business districts. Um, Will we look forward to it in 2016, or is that yet to be determined? Well, it's still yet to be determined, but okay. we will be bringing beach streets back. That is okay. something that uh, I'm committed to doing. Um, okay. I know the mayor is committed to doing that as well. Right. Um, th that was the first time ever that we actually had a full court press of just about every city resource yeah. um, in the 8th District in North Long Beach. And wow. you got to look at that. I mean, when I, um, several years ago, five years ago, four years ago, there were people who said, you know what, our, our, our area of the city doesn't matter. I would yeah. say today that North Long Beach, Uptown, is very relevant in the conversation it throughout the city of Long Beach. We, we matter today. Yeah. We're going to take a short break. As you can see, there's a lot going on in the 8th District. And when we come back, we will continue our conversation with Councilman Al Austin. Stay tuned for more of Long Beach Clinics. pet friendly. Everybody has a dog in Long Beach. It's Dog City. Well, there's everything to do here. You got the pike, you got Queen Mary, you got the beaches, you got paddle boarding, surfing. You go half a mile that way, you got surfing, you got downtown. I just think it's the most, most incredible, most beautiful, most unique city, which has so much to offer. So I love it here and I'll never leave. Welcome back. I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson. Joining us is Long Beach Councilman Al Austin here on Long Beach Lens. And before the break, uh, Councilman, we got to talk a great deal about all the positive that's going on in the 8th District that uh, I'm sure you're proud of and the business community and the citizens up there. And I, I would be remiss 
if I didn't bring up the fact that when you're in the 8th district, one of the things that you often see, especially at council meetings, are the concerns about the airport and what's going on with the international terminal and how that might be the entree to something bigger than what's being said, et cetera. But talk to us about what's, what your perspective is on the airport right now. Well, um, the airport is a very sensitive and delicate issue for, for the city, um, particularly um, uh, many residents in the 8th District. Um, I um, have uh, been, been very clear with my uh, reservations about um, moving forward with an international uh, facility there. And where we stand right now, um, the City Council, um, I voted in a minority. Um, but this is not a unanimous uh, mm -hmm. decision, and this is and, and the, the council is very still very split on this issue. I mm -hmm. think I, it's very important to uh, to, to um, point that out. But where we are right now is, um, you know, shortly there will be a feasibility study mm -hmm. uh, moving forward in terms of is it, uh, and, and the, the council will determine uh, whether or not it is feasible based on the data they receive from this um, study. Um, it is not a foregone conclusion that we will have an international mm -hmm. um, uh, facility or customs facility at mm -hmm. the uh, Long Beach Airport. Um, so we are going in a stay tuned um, kind of mode. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do all we can to make sure that our, our residents are, are uh, informed and, and mm -hmm. uh, be very transparent and clear on um, the process. Uh, but um, I, like I said, I have my reservations for a lot of technical reasons. Um, there are a lot of unknown variables um, associated with this, uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 with this proposal right now. Gotcha. And so JetBlue has uh, approached the, the city of Long Beach. JetBlue has been a, a, a long time um, large business uh, mm -hmm. operating it and, and at, at Long Beach Airport. Mm -hmm. um, the city uh, and many other council members felt like they owed the JetBlue the due diligence to at least right. look at the feasibility study. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's where we are right now. Um, I, I expect that issue to come back before the city council in, in mm -hmm. several months, um, and uh, we will deal with it then. Gotcha. Yeah, and I, I can tell you, just having recently had to fly out of the major airport in this region, that it made me love Long Beach Airport even more. Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I personally, I utilize Long Beach Airport right. um, every opportunity I can. Um, it is so a convenient yeah. travel um, mm -hmm. option, particularly those who was for those who do business in state. Mm -hmm. um, the business model that uh, JetBlue wants to move forward with, it would be going to South America. Right. Um, and that comes with a lot of unknowns. And, right. and so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that as it comes. One of the issues that came forth just recently was um, the, the noise. Um, and and, and I'll, I'll just say, I am absolutely committed, um, and mm -hmm. I'll say this right now, I am absolutely committed to protecting our very precious noise ordinance here in the city of Long Beach. However, what came forth uh, before the city council was more of an administrative legal matter that um, we actually had to uh, open up slots because the flights right. over the course of the years have gotten a lot quieter because of mm -hmm. technology and, mm -hmm. and quieter aircraft being utilized by the carriers mm -hmm. at Long Beach Airport. And so in an effort to protect our noise ordinance, our city attorney, um, opine that we needed to actually open up slots based on the data they received. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, we would open ourselves up to a challenge, wow. which we could even be more slots. Makes it quite complex. Right. And it is a, a little bit of information issue. in this particular case could be dangerous if you don't know everything in proper context. It Absolutely. Like. So continuing on then from a business perspective, infrastructure, I know, is a big deal in, in every district, and specifically it is a concern in your district as well. Well, infrastructure has been a priority of mine um, throughout my, my, my first term in office. Um, I was recently appointed um, to the State Legislative Committee, and I've been working uh, with the League of Cities and um, other municipalities across the state in Sacramento to, mm -hmm. to move uh, legislation, to help move legislation to get funding for infrastructure here on the local level, mm -hmm. and that has kind of been stagnant. Mm -hmm. um, we need to fix our infrastructure in the city. I mean, I and every city council member that I know uh, wants to, to do that. It's very important that you know we we get on top of our um, our, our our infrastructure, our street repairs, our, mm -hmm. our sidewalks, our curbs and gutters. Um, these are these are areas um, of concern that if we go unaddressed, 
uh, will will create a, a situation where situation. we won't be a, right. a the, the the world class city that we we uh, right. we want to be. Right, and I know in in your district, uh, green space is, is precious, and and you have some beautiful parks up there, and and you mentioned in the first segment how you're working with nonprofits such as us and working with youth. But uh, speak a bit about the green space and, and what your vision is. Well, my vision um, for green space, we have some unique opportunities in front of us. Um, I can tell you that we are park poor in, in, in North Long Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, most uh, families don't have the opportunity and most of our youth don't have the opportunity to play in little leagues or mm -hmm. play soccer close to home or attend, uh, play football, youth football, mm -hmm. or anything like that close to home. They, they generally are going to Cerritos or going mm -hmm. to East Long Beach or other mm -hmm. cities to do so. Um, I think it's very important for us to uh, create active green space in, in uh, particularly the 8th District and we have some unique opportunities to do that. Um, and passive green space as well. I'm really proud mm -hmm. of the fact that we were able to just recently break ground on the DeForest Wetlands project right. that was a right. project that took over 10 years yeah. uh, to, uh, to come to fruition and it took uh, constant prodding and, and a lot of hard work by uh, myself as well as the 9th District uh, Council Office mm -hmm. to make sure that we got that to fruition and so that's uh, close to um, 40 acres of green space there that will be created right here and most of that in the 8th district uh, passive green space that will be uh, wildlife restoration and and uh, um, will, will really um, be a serene experience for for anybody right. um, along the LA River which is yeah. we're very proud of but we also have an opportunity to create about seven and a half acres of new green space yeah. at, with phase two at Dav Davenport Park which is on Paramount Boulevard right. Um, right. Okay. and so we expect to hopefully have uh, some soccer fields and some green space for oh, kids to have some active uh, recreation there mm -hmm. and then uh, as, uh, associated with the River Rock pro project uh, the mm -hmm. developer there has a, 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 a development agreement uh, which will uh, require them to build a three acre park on Oregon and Delamo, which will be active green space as well. And so there's some opportunities where we have over uh, 40 plus acres of active or green space and, and about 10 acres of active mm -hmm. green space um, coming on within the next couple of years. Quite a bit going on. Yes. If we could pull up out of, in the, in the five minutes or so that we have left, out of the 8th district and talk about your role on the council because you're not just representing the 8th district you're also representing this entire city Absolutely. on many important matters first uh, the relationship that you have with the council uh, how has that been it seems like it's a, a very cohesive relationship among most I mean you agree to disagree as you should but what would be your perspective? I think my perspective and the word that I would use is collegial. Uh, there's a great collegiality amongst the, the council right now. The, the tone has, has changed significantly since I've been on the council. I've right. worked under two mayors, mm -hmm. um, different styles, um, but different personnel and different mm -hmm. personalities with, with council members. We have five right. new council members right. come on the council two years ago. Um, kind of makes you a senior council person and too, right? It propelled me into a senior <laughs> uh, role in, yeah. in my first two years on, on the council, right, absolutely. Right. So um, the, the, the relationship that, that we have is, is all good. One thing that I'd like to point out is that each one of my council, mem council colleagues, I have something in common with, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when, when, when you have something in common with, with somebody, you, you mm -hmm. can you can build on that in terms right. of relationship. Right. Right. You know, right. we don't we're not we're not going to agree on everything. No, you sure, know, sure. our right. dis districts sometimes are very different. The needs of the districts are different. Mm -hmm. uh, we de we represent um, different communities and and mm -hmm. of interest. But um, we we look to I think what I like like to do is look to where we agree on and and and, and build on that and understand mm -hmm. that we're going to take it vote by vote, um, mm -hmm. week by week, and and and, and go from there. Mm -hmm. Now I know in, with that relationship and with our new mayor, there's lots of changes going on citywide. And uh, when you think about that, what are some of the things that you may be excited about from the city of Long Beach perspective? I know we're very proud of our port and uh, we're very proud of like new operations like the Mercedes uh, operation in town and Douglas Park. But what comes to your mind about the city that you're 
proud about, looking forward to. Well, there's just so much going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, that's, a, that's a crazy, it's a, that's a difficult question to answer. Right, right. I won't call it a crazy question, but it's yeah. a difficult question yeah. because... I've been known there, to ask crazy ones, yeah, too. Though. There, there <laughs> is a lot going on. Um, you know, I think the Civic Center project, even though that is a dis not outside of my district, right. um, it's a project that um, promises to create thousands of jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, it promises to transform our downtown. It brings our city hall and port and, and our, our government together right. uh, for, for the first time. It will, it will, it will bring a sense of community and, and, and uh, a new energy to, uh, to downtown. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that, um, right. seeing that project um, through. Uh, I'm also looking forward to, um, you know, the improvements along the 710 freeway. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that is a major transportation corridor, major mm -hmm. goods movement uh, uh, vehicle that, that, mm -hmm. that has to be improved. And through my work on the Gateway Cities Council of Governments, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, working with SCAG and, and mm -hmm. other regional uh, entities, we hope to get some movement on that as well. We started out the program here with you asking about what you learned about your district when you got into office. What have you learned, we have one minute left, succinctly, what have you learned about yourself as a leader uh, in this time that you've been in office? You know, I've learned that it's not about me. Right. It's about we. Um, it's about the community that, that I, I serve, um, and I can't do enough to, to reach out and, and to get um, input from the residents, the 50, five plus thousand residents who, who I represent. Mm -hmm. I am in our schools. Um, I am mm -hmm. outreaching to our seniors, mm -hmm. our youth. Um, we are looking at any and every way to, to, uh, to make sure that we are adequately uh, representing mm -hmm. and effectively representing um, the, the 8th District. And, and again, so I would just say that it's, it's, it's not about me. Uh, I'm humbled, honored to be able to serve um, in the capacity, in this special time in this city's history, um, this city, um, and I don't take it lightly in, in any way. Thank you, Councilman. It's, it's been great, as always, talking with you. Uh, you. We're out of time, and that concludes our show. I'd like to thank Councilman Al Austin for joining us today. Be sure to follow PadNet TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest updates. This show has been brought to you with the support from the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Thank you for watching Long Beach Lens.